All right, Edgar Rivera, your comment uh, was very helpful to me for today's video. Uh, I really did have something else in mind, but I love that you asked me that question about, or that you uh, had that comment about the dip tank because I want to talk about that today. So here's my input on dip tank versus doing it yourself. Now, here's what I think. I think that um, if you have a dip tank, well, this is actually what I know. If you have a dip tank, you have to have it somewhere close by the um, washout booth. And the reason why it's because when you lift it off the dip tank, it tends, it tends to drip out all that chemical and it ends up on the floor. Um, I know my floor looks dirty, but it's not. It's just uh, the water stains. And, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like it. It just, uh, it really makes a mess on the floor. Uh, second reason why I don't like the dip tank it's because when you have it in there like the chemicals just kind of kind of start corroding the uh, the aluminum and I like to keep my frames as clean as possible so it's faster in a way that it gets off the emotion but then you have to like scrub the sides a little extra to keep them clean if you care to keep them clean um, the third and the most important reason why I don't like the dip tank and I don't mean to bash on your on your comment. It's just my input. Uh, I had a personal experience with this company where I worked at for 10 years, and they still use the dip tank, but they changed the screens that they use. So the screens that they use are no longer glued to the edges. They have like um, this cutout mesh that they lock into the screen, and then you can easily replace it. But it's a very expensive. Um, change if you want to make that change or if you can afford it but it is effective for the dip tank for a big company they do about 50 to 100 screens a day and it works for them but for us you know you have the dip tank and um, the worst part about it in my opinion and in my experience is that if you if you have it in there the chemical, even if you have it down to like the ounce per gallon, the chemical starts eating away the glue on the sides of the frame a little bit at a time. So, you, nobody's perfect. So this happened to me before and I know it's happened to a lot of people where you leave the screen in there longer than you're supposed to and that makes it worse. <clears throat> and what happens is you start losing your tension on your mesh. So that's really the worst thing that can happen to your screen is to lose that tension. Like for example, when you have like a tiny cut, it just releases tension all the way across and you may still have some on the backside. But with that dip tank in there, um, the chemicals eating away evenly on all the sides and it just starts becoming less and less tension. If you have the tension meter, then um, you can go ahead and measure it yourself to see if uh, if this is true or not we even got down to uh, having a, a timer in our dip tank to make sure that it wasn't in there for longer than that time and it would still eat away the glue and it would lose the tension on the mesh so with that being said Edgar Rivera I will not have a dip tank here at my shop anytime soon or Probably I will never have one ever just because I like the tension on my screens. I don't mind spending the extra minute cleaning a single screen at a time because um, it, it keeps my quality at the level that I like it. Please comment um, your experience on the dip tank versus doing one at a time. I try to teach you guys the easiest possible way to reclaim by by coating the screens correctly and by taping them the way that I tape them to save time and chemicals. I do understand that um, you mentioned the tape and, and it's going to save me uh, money with the tape. I bought that um, I bought a whole box of tape like three months ago and I still have about 80% of the tape. So, 
to be quite honest with you, that thing was like 40 bucks and it lasts me a really long time. Even though I use a lot of tape, you guys see that and know that. So I, I really wouldn't call it a loss of money on tape. I would call it a loss of money on screens if you were losing your tension on the screens because they're about 25 bucks each. And also, <clears throat> I wanna talk to you guys about uh, either buying screens that are brand new versus the screens that are restretched. My friend Jeremiah likes to give me crap about the screens that are, are uh, restretched versus the new ones. Here, let me fix this. It looked like it was crooked. All right, so I personally don't like to buy the restretched ones because, and this is nothing against people that restretch them. I used to restretch screens and I ran into this problem. This is the only reason why I know this. So whenever they bring out the big rolls, they try to fit in as many screens as they can to not waste any mesh. But what happens is when they pull out that roll, the screen is supposed to go a certain way every single time. So you're not supposed to put it like this and, like, and then like that because when you stretch out the uh, mesh, it's supposed to have its, its vertical and its, its, its horizontal. So I forgot what they call it. It's like something and worth or whatever the words are for that. But if you try to fit in the most you can for a roll, the ones that are crossed, when you stretch it, it's gonna create a moiré. So if you ever buy screens that are stretched and you're having moiré, that's probably what happened. They were trying to fit in more screens than they were supposed to by, by saving space or whatever you wanna call it uh, in the roll. And that's the reason why I don't like it. So whenever you get a brand new screen that is made for the first time, you know it came from the manufacturer and you know it was done right because you typically don't have that moray. And for those who don't know what moray is, and it happens more with half tones, whenever you print and you have like those waves inside the design that look weird, that's what it is. And, and all it is is the mesh not being stretched correctly. So the, uh, the spaces in between the threading are not opened all the way and that creates that problem. So I'd rather spend the extra 10 or $15 per screen and not have to spend time reclaiming that screen and try and figure out why that happened. So that's my input. And if you don't wanna be buying screens very often, don't use the dip tank. Take your time washing them out one at a time. If you guys need, um, brand new screens, you guys can um, always call my friends at AST and they will definitely help you out with either getting a dip tank if you need one or just getting new screens or the chemicals for, for your screens. So I don't recommend the dip tank, just so you guys know. And uh, just if you have any questions about the chemicals that I use, I'm gonna link them below. I've talked about it in the past, but it doesn't hurt to uh, say it one more time. So what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna name it and I'm gonna put them step by step and I'm gonna put the ratios of the mixtures in it if, uh, if it requires a, uh, a mixture. Thank you guys. Subscribe if you haven't. Share the video if you think it's helpful and make sure you give it a thumbs up if you uh, agree with what I'm saying. I, after I was done talking about the uh, dip tank situation, uh, I started setting up this job for clients. I still need two more screens, actually four more screens that are sitting over there, but these are taking the space for what I'm doing right now. And I ran out of white. I was working on this job and, um, you know, I needed to open up a new gallon and I thought I showed you guys how much I like cracking open the new gallon of white.